Hello ladies and gentlemen, Marauder X here, back with more Let's Play Skies of Arcadia. And as you can see, my stats and everything are just a little bit different. I'm not exactly where I was, I'm in the same turn, but in between last episode and this episode, I stopped recording, came back to this point, and I played the battle a little differently. Uh, you can skip a fair bit of it if you know the battle by using the ability to knock uh, Recumen off balance. You don't get hit. And so you don't take a lot of damage. So, like here, if I were to do... No. If I were to do that, uh, we'd be in pretty good shape. So that's actually what I'm going to do. And... I'm going to focus, and... I'm going to focus. I'm just going to focus. Everyone's... Everyone's... Going to focus. Yeah. Everyone's going to focus. So... Knowing that, I've gotten to this point in the battle, I've taken no damage whatsoever, uh, but the, the we're still in the same uh, turn we were when I, I ended it. Uh, if you play the battle normally, you get the prompts like Drachma says, hey, maybe you should try knocking it off balance. If you knock it off balance right from the start, it it never gives you those prompts. It just goes to Aka's, hey, we, we knocked it off balance. Yay, let's keep doing that and not be stupid. So, that is one of the things uh, to know going into this, is you can knock it off balance. And that's something you kind of want to do, because the next fight after this, it's a winnable fight, but it's a fight based more on surviving attacks, much like this. We're going to have to play it smart and not just rush in. Which, even playing it smart, is no guarantee that you're going to win, depending on if the uh, your opponent decides to... You know, spam certain attacks, but we'll get into that. So, as I said before, this is not a winnable fight against Recumen. There's no possible way. I looked up, no one has a confirmed HP stat for him. So, I'm going to go out on a limb and say it's uh, invincible. So, yeah. Uh, we are going to start this round with uh, Ankrum, then we are going to 3-inch... Actually, this one it doesn't really matter as much because the harpoon cannon will knock it off, knock it off balance. So we will just save some of our spirit points, and yeah, we'll just we'll just keep focusing because the harpoon cannon by itself will knock it off balance. So th that is something that we can pay attention to, especially for these rounds, because it, as you saw in the next. Uh, turn sequence, the two possibilities based off of our action, we either get two chances to fire the Harpoon Cannon or no chances to fire the Harpoon Cannon. But the downside to this is, even if we get two chances to fire the Harpoon Cannon, even if you had the enough spirit to use it twice, you can only use the Harpoon Cannon once per round, which is four turns. So you can't have Vice and then Aka do Harpoon cannon attacks, which I find to be ridiculous. If they give you that many options, you should, if you have the, the spirit for it, let them do it. It's it's rare that you're going to get that number of hits in anyway, but if, they're, if you're going to give more than one turn chance to use it, you might as well let us use it. And see, it the harpoon cannon or two cannons together will be enough to knock it off balance right before one of the red blocks. So, you can do that to kind of save on HP and MP. My last episode where I just played it normally, I had used MP a couple of times to heal, and because we go into the next fight straight from this one, our current status, uh, HP and MP wise, will carry over with us. So if we blew all of our MP in this fight, we're just not in a good situation. And if I say, I don't know how long we... He's got to have a weakness. No, he doesn't. So we have a choice. We can either concentrate fire on his heads or on his feet. You want to do the heads. That will give you the two uh, harpoon cannon options. That one will just give you two regular options, which you're going to get hit once. This way, we can at least have this fun little strategy. Because we can only use a cannon once in an attack round, we can do the three-inch cannon and main cannon there, and then we can do the harpoon cannon on the next turn. 
so it really does give us a little bit of an advantage. So we're, at this point it doesn't matter who I, who, who I do anything with, I'm just gonna focus. There's really no point. But this gives us the option to dodge both attacks, as opposed to just dodging one, because if we had the option where we did not have the harpoon cannon, we could not concentrate two cannon shots on the same turn, because we only have one uh, three-inch cannon. Or, uh, yeah, I think it's a three-inch cannon. I don't remember what little hash was after that, either a little one hash mark or two, and, uh, yeah. So you would be hit by one of them. So you want to make sure you aim for the heads. That Aim for the heads and make sure you have more than enough spirit to do both cannons on one turn, and that's actually a little bit more because the, the smaller cannons will... you have to increase them over two turns. So you have to have the smaller cannon for two turns, large cannon for one, then the harpoon cannon. But following this strategy allows us to basically come out of this fight unscathed. We have not taken a single point of damage. We really haven't done any notable damage to him, but we're also on this, like, I don't have to guard, I don't have to cast any healing spells, so that spirit that I have built up, if this guy had a definable amount of HP to where it was possible to win, we could probably keep fighting. But at this point, it's like, we sh saw that that was our best attack round, and it did nothing to it. The only thing we're managing to do is damage our own ship, except we haven't. We haven't taken any damage right now. We took damage in the last episode, but this technically isn't the same uh, play of that, so eh. But regardless of what we do, there's going to be a, a thing of we can either retreat and regroup or continue fighting. You're going to want to retreat and regroup because there's really nothing we can do by by dragging this fight out. We do have the strategy on how to not take damage, but sadly the little jack is just not armed to damage the red gigas. And so in this case we have no XP because we didn't actually win. Kinda sucks. So nothing's working, we can't fight it head on, we don't have the the damage output. There's gotta be another way to stop it. It's like Gigas don't make their own decisions, they only obey commands given to them by the ones who awaken them. So until Belize commands it to stop, there's nothing we can do. So if something were to happen to Belize. I got it, I know how to stop that thing. Alright, so this is another swashbuckler event. We can either attack Belize's ship or ram into the Gigas. I really want to know what Vice is smoking, thinking that ramming into the Gigas is a good idea and has anything to do with stopping Belize's commands. So obviously attacking Belize's ship is the, the right course of action. If we use the other one, it would remove <laughs> points from our swashbuckler rating because... And, and to be fair, if you did pick that option, you kind of deserve to have your swashbuckler rating lower because that's just stupid. Get over. Let's go! Alright, so now we change targets. We ignore the Red Gigas, and we are going after Belize's ship. So this is a fight that we actually have the potential to win. This is against the Lynx. And her ship is a Valuan, you know, powerhouse. Fourth Admiral Belize, the Lynx. Now I'll show you the two true power of the Imperial Army with my magic cannon. So, okay. She has a cannon. It sucks. I'm just gonna throw that out there. It... It bloody sucks. It allows her to cast all offensive spells as a shot. And that's just not fun at all. So I'm gonna cast Ankrum just right off the bat to help increase my defense, and then I'm gonna defend on the next turn because she's probably going to throw out the magic cannon, and we can see it. Oh, she's throwing out Ingram. Okay, so she's mimicking us. Now, this ship has a lot of really, really nasty combos, and her AI will play off those combos. She has the magic cannon, which can cast Pyrie. 
she can cast Wevelin, and obviously Ingram and Sakri, but those are ones that we can cast. So she has two offensive spells. Wevelin hurts. It is just damage. She also has a main cannon, a lynx cannon, and a sub cannon, and she also has torpedoes. One thing she really likes to do is have either a torpedo or sub cannon hit on the same turn that she will aim the magic cannon at you. And if she aims Wevely and a sub cannon at you, if you're not guarding, there's a good chance you are going to die. Because the sub that was uh, Wevely by itself, it did 3,000 points of damage. That's, that's insane. Like, we really don't have a, a counter to that. So, what we're gonna do is, I am going to use a, actually no, a repair kit won't really help us. Uh, and Sakri won't really help us either. Uh, what we're gonna do is, have Vice Guard, have Aka cast Sakra's guard and focus. This is a fight that you just want to survive until you get the option to use the Moonstone Cannon. One Moonstone Cannon shot should be enough to take her out, or at least to cripple her to where we're, we're not going to be as worried. But we also have... We'll have to get through a couple of prompts of what our, our combat decisions do to try to put us in a better situation to actually go on the offensive. And if we had continued this fight with uh, a diminished amount of MP or HP from the Recumen fight, that really just puts us in a bad way. So we saw that she launch launched the torpedoes, and she's aiming the Wevelin, and yeah, that, that hurt. <laughs> that hurt a lot. So... Again, I'm focusing most of my attention on reducing the amount of damage and repairing the amount of damage as possible. I might throw that bomb out at her if I get a, a, a good shot. Because, you know, bombs are good. The Lady Admiral's good. It's almost as if she can read our every move. I can't find any openings in her defense. It's just, what, what should we do? Alright, so the first prompt... We have, we can try to get behind her ship, try to turn hard and catch her off guard. You want to try to catch her off guard. That's what we want to do. It's quicker than, yeah, we are smaller, so we are mo a little more maneuverable than she is. Alright, so now we can actually go a little bit on the offensive, and I'm not going to right now. Uh, I'm... Uh, I will do a little bit of damage that turn. I will cast Sacrez, and I will guard. So we'll do a little bit of damage to her, because I want to make sure she has a little bit, just in case the, the Harpoon Cannon is not enough to, to finish her off. I'm pretty sure her ship will take a massive amount of damage to the Harpoon Cannon, which is amazing that we have a Harpoon Cannon, and she does not. It is Valuan technology, you would expect, you know, a, a, a heavy end weapon like that to be on, you know, the ad Admiral's ships. But her specialty is the Magic Cannon, and I missed with the main cannon. Thank you so much. Thank you, Vice. Okay, so she's using the torpedo again. Not good. Ouch! And that was a little damaging. Because that had three things hit me all at once. Alright, now the turn's over. I can't find any openings. We need to get into a good position to fire the Harpoon Cannon. So we have wait and see what she does, or set engines to full speed and get behind her. We want to get behind her. That will at least give us the, the green field. The enemy vessel is trying to circle around what appears to be their top speed. 
but at least they know that we have the harpoon cannon and they are trying to keep tabs on it. Alright, so again, we are going to try this combo to do a little bit of damage. I'm gonna have Fina, because I think Fina has a higher guard, and we'll have we'll have Drachma heal. He only has Sa Sacri, so actually no, we will we'll do this. We'll have you heal with Sacrez. We'll have Fina guard, and we'll have Drachma help out with the damage on that turn. I want to make sure I'm at full health because really she's. I, I'm not going to let her catch me off guard. Not going to do it. One lucky hit with all three of those, if she could hit with a main cannon or her magic cannon, most likely she'd have her magic cannon on one turn, the sub cannon, and then a torpedo. If all three of those hit and she used Wevelin, I, I would be in a world of hurt. But thankfully, I... I'm, you know, smart and deciding to guard. But we're doing a fair bit of damage, and I'm pretty sure she's got more than enough chipped off now that the the Harpoon Cannon will finish her off. So, regardless of what we pick next turn, because we did have two options, both of them had the Harpoon Cannon as, as a viable attack, but I'm going to make sure I pick the right one. So... And... I really hate Wevelyn. This isn't fair. Why won't she just sit still like everyone else does? Okay, so at least... Alright, so we can head straight upward or bring the little jack to a complete stop. And we want to head straight upward. Is... Just go into a street, uh, steep bank, go up. Uh, it, it put a lot of stress on her, but that's why she'd never think we'd do it. It's... We will catch her off guard. And she won't, yep, she won't have anything to do, and we've got more than enough to make sure we can use the Moonstone Cannon. And just to make sure, I'm going to guarantee we have Ankrum, and I'm going to throw out a standard cannon shot. No, I'm going to have her guard just in case, and then I'll have a standard cannon shot. Uh, and she used Ankrum as well. That's that's really why I wanted to make sure we had Ankrum, because I don't know how long it lasts. It doesn't give us the little... Ooh, that hurt a lot. So I think our Ankrum has worn off. And we missed. Thank you for that. So as long as we don't get hit with with a Wevelin shot. Okay, target lost. Uh, we've we've won this fight, because the next next attack is our Moonstone Cannon. Or Harpoon Cannon. Harpoon cannon. Moonstone Cannon I'm getting ahead of myself. There is a Moonstone Cannon. So And that's it. Twenty-four thousand points of damage. We have taken out the Lynx. So, we won that fight. 881, no magic XP, unfortunately. But, you know, a decent amount of... We get a Captain Stripe, we get her magic cannon, and a another blaster. So, fantastic. Or, at least another sub-cannon. It's not quite the... Signal Belize's ship. We will attack if they don't call off the Gigas. We've pretty much beaten you. Listen to the demands, or we will kill you. I'm sure she'll call off the Gigas. All we have to do is hope that that's accurate, Vice. Nope. Looks like Recumen is... ...descending back into the sand. So... Call off the Gigas, we are making an emergency landing. 
Yay for listening to us. Let's see what the story has to offer. This will be a slightly long episode because of the story, but, you know, we had, you know, a fun fight to deal with. I love how he doesn't go back to the temple, like where he was. He just He's just going to dig into the sand. And we have re-recovered the Red Moon Crystal. There are five crystals left. And several other, you know, admirals. We'll get those crystals, and we won't trust you again. Let's not discuss our plan of attack in front of the enemy, shall we? There's a continent under the green moon. And Vice is just blown away by this. The continent of Ixitaka. South Ocean has a strong headwind. You'll never make it across with that tiny ship. Oh, don't. Don't diss the little jack. We're taking your ship's engine. <laughs> I love how Drachma's like, yeah, we're taking your stuff. And how am I going to get home? Oh, well, you'll have to wait for, you know, a tow. Only those who have walked through the desert can truly know it's a... Ooh. Oh, that's... That's a little dark, but, you know. We're just going to be, you know, a complete bastard to believe it. But she was a bitch to us, so... Ooh, she's... I don't know if she's looking out for us, or if she's just trying to intimidate us. <laughs> I'm not going to rest until I've left my mark on the world. I, I think she's interested in us. Vice happens to be... He seems to be a, a very popular ladies' man. Alright, so after taking their engine, and their magic cannon, and one of their sub-cannons, we leave! I don't know why we didn't take, you know, more. I mean, granted their ship is in really bad shape, so it's not the best, but... You receive the Red Moon Crystal. Fantastic. And after this really long loading stream, it looks like we picked up a magic cannon. We'll be able to fire cannonballs charged with magical energy, just like she was. Using the magic cannon uses MP just like normal magic, so don't go, go too crazy with it. Alright, so that's it for now. We are we're done with this episode, and I'm going to save it, and I will see you guys in the next installment where we will uh, traverse the South Ocean to the continent of Ixitaka. Till then, later everyone.